Well, I tell you, what do you call a camel with three humps? I don't know. What do you call a camel with three humps? Pregnant. So, welcome, and uh, yeah, we ended last week with some angry uh, angry small people, and we're picking up this week again with uh, angrier small people. And uh, I'm joined, as always, by my co-hosts, my lovely brothers. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Dylan Crowder. I'm Ansel Crowder. <laughs> Yeah, I'll stretch it out a little bit. We got some time. I'm Dylan <laughs> Crowder. Right, He's perfect. Dylan. <laughs> Lovely. How's it going, guys? How did what did you think of the it's book? First good. impressions, right off. Come on. Um. It, this was tough for me to read. I'm not gonna lie. This was this was a tough one to trawl through. Hmm. It, it was a breeze for me to get through. Okay. What and, did you think? Uh, I, I'm once again with Dylan. Apparently, this was a page turner for me. Uh, I got started really late and finished really early, so liked it. Um, but we'll get into that quickly enough. Did anybody? I, I'll expand did a little bit. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Go ahead. The um, I felt like it could have been much much shorter. Like I, I feel like there's a lot of filler, and hmm. like only the only the two last two chapters were super interesting to me. I felt like it could have been a much shorter book, and, and saying that it was easier for me to get through does not necessarily mean it was a page turner. Okay, fair enough. Given given that the last book was what it was, uh, Ansel, anything you want to expand on yours? Why was it? Why was it? A, um, why was it a choker for you? I I honestly don't know. Um, I think um, a part of it, a part of it was um, just the fact. I don't, I don't know. It was just uh, it didn't keep my interest for a lot of reasons. Uh, not that I hated it, but it was just not. You know, it was not a page turner for me. Okay. Well, fair enough. And and I think we we'll we'll end up working through this uh like we did with uh the catcher in the rye. You know, I think I ke- I think we came out of last week and uh as as much as Dylan and I railed on you for liking it, uh you brought up some good points as to some of its merits and uh we'll see how this goes. Couple of quick questions. Uh did anybody do any sort of outside research or did anybody perhaps watch the film again or um i didn't watch the film or anything i did do some reading up on it and there is not a lot of interesting tidbits there's not no comedy gold mine as far as the publishing of the book okay or, so uh, we're looking William at a Golden short Clive. episode yeah okay no um it didn't inspire crime like our no. previous uh previous book hmm you know, as I was reading through it, and and we'll just we'll just start off. I want to try and uh, do it like this. We'll talk a little bit about the book itself. We'll talk a little bit about uh, just what we would like to have seen in the book, or maybe how would you do this in a movie? I think that's pretty cool. And uh, and then I'd like to at the end, I'd like to contrast the writing styles, and I don't want to make this a compare and contrast thing. But I think I found this to be the total opposite of last week's book. And for many reasons that I'd like to get into. So uh, I want to start with Dylan. Just go ahead and let me know if there's a... What do you want to start talking about in the book itself, per se? Well. Or we can pass that to Ansel. (laughs) (laughs) 
I guess I guess the main the main talking point would be the um the the overarching theme of the book, which is the beast inside all of us. Ooh, yeah. Expand on that, please. So is that <laughs> yeah? So is that something that you uh, would keep about the book, or is that something that you would you thought was fitting or appropriate? Did, did the beast stir something inside of you did, when you had the realization that well, you're I, not beast free? Uh, it's hard for me to say because I've never been in a situation like that where survival has been the number one concern. Um, so I don't know if I would go go 100% savage or not. I would I would say that I I believe if there were a bunch of schoolboys marooned on an island it would not get that far they would die within a week. <laughs> May, maybe Probably maybe so. that's the difference between children in the the 50s when this book was written and and the children of the the 80s and the 90s and today um yeah I don't think there would be any any hunting, any killing, any building of shelters. Well, you said last week that you would have been a, a hipster at the at the dawn of man or something like that. Do you think you would go hipster if you were stranded on an island? <laughs> I, I would be. I would have to see how the rest of the people acted, and then I would do the exact opposite. Okay, in order to be cool. Like if everybody was like hunting pigs, I'd be like, nah. Nah. If everybody was building fires, signal fires, I'd be like, nah. I'm going I'm going to build a raft. That's well, what I'm I think do. I think um speaking of Ralph's, uh I think Ralph was right that the fire was the most important thing for them to tend to. Would you agree with that? Uh definitely, I would. I mean, he seemed to have his head on straight uh pretty much for most of it, but yeah. Yeah. I think what Dylan is saying, though, is that he sounds like Piggy to me. You know, that he's not hunting. He's not doing the fire. Just the hell with all of it. I'm cleaning my glasses. And, well, you know. uh, in Piggy's Piggy, defense, Piggy's he actually kind of yeah. did do the fire. Well, Piggy, if it weren't for Piggy, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be no fire. Yeah. Um, but that makes me, like, when I was reading this, I was like, is it really that easy to make a fire with your glasses? Because, I mean... Yeah, they were talking about using damp wood and and right. stuff like that. And green limbs, <laughs> and you hold up glasses to it, and hey, look it's at not that easy. It's not that easy. But you know, Tolkien. I mean, uh, uh, Golding was uh, he was actually in the navy, and I don't think they they probably didn't build a lot of fires on naval ships. I don't, I don't know, but uh, no, it's it's not that easy. And Piggy must have been one blind bastard to be able to light fires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> with yeah. with his glasses. Uh, I've, I've never seen that. I'm, I'm thinking about trying it out tomorrow myself. But yeah, uh, Ansel, why? Uh, why did? Why didn't they? Why didn't they try to build a raft at any point? Like I, I don't imagine it would be that hard to make something that would float out of wood. Well, I think in hindsight's 2020. I think if Ralph had known that they were going to sweep the island and uh, put his head on a stick, I think he would have had a raft ready. Yeah. Ready to go, <laughs> docked. But I don't think he anticipated that. Like it's like you know, he 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 thought the group, uh, what's the word, the spree de corps would hold over. Like I, I don't know how long how how long they were on this island. It was hard to tell, but it seems like you know six seven months. So. It feels like it was months at the very least, maybe maybe two or three months that, uh, you know, yeah. given the time that they're talking about all their hair getting long and uh, how dirty they've just become in general, in, regardless of bathing, you know, they don't have soap, but uh, I'm thinking it's months. And maybe there is something to this because, uh, like you said, children, children today would be uh, up the creek, so to say, and... I don't know. Maybe, maybe they did have something going for them in the in the ways of survivability. These these haughty English children, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's, well, yeah, I did I, the, say the, the thought at of the a raft of the book, never the, came to me. 
Yeah, and I thought about a raft. I mean, they said that there were islands within, you know, within sight. Um, but on the other hand, the first rule of survival is you stay put, right? So maybe. I thought it was drink your own piss. That's what beer. beer That's grills the third about. rule. Oh, okay. the second rule is you. <laughs> you piss on a handkerchief and put it over your head. Yeah, yeah. But the third uh, that's, rule is you that's drink all it. true. Whatever, whatever, whatever you have left, you drink. Can, can you wring out the <laughs> handkerchief and drink that? Why would you wring? That's it not advisable. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. Once it's once it's reached a, a certain temperature on the top of your head, which is equal yeah. to body temperature, but for a longer period of time exposed to the elements, it's no longer fit for uh, consumption. Yeah, and it'll be tainted by advisable. sweat too, and it's not going to taste right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you want that. Well, I mean, I've heard that it ages well. <laughs> well, you have to have the correct barrels and, and you know, a certain humidity oh. in the cellar for that. But uh, right, it's right. Uh, it was on a Bear Grylls episode. but uh, Which reminds me, how many bears would Bear Grylls grill if Bear Grylls could grill bears? That that depends on if the bear is actually just like a production assistant in a bear suit. <laughs> fair enough. All right. <laughs> fair, fair enough. I I, I I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I've always assumed the answer was one because you know, it's, it's that's a lot of bear. All it's right. It's just greedy after that point. Yeah. Exactly. Leave some bear for the rest, right? <laughs> right. Um. Well, all right, we've jumped right into it. This is good, I think. Uh, the question of the rafts is an interesting one. I'm going to... I don't remember them saying that islands were visible nearby. Did it Did it say that? I don't know for sure. I, I seem to recall it, but sometimes I was kind of zoning out while reading. You guys ever do that? Where oh, yeah. I, I definitely did that with this book. <laughs> where, <laughs> where it's like you're thinking about... Um, I don't know, like what you're going to get at the grocery store. And I probably, I think I kind of recall reading about islands being visible, but I don't remember for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I, yeah, I don't, re- I don't recall that at all. And, but maybe it's there. And like you said, I zoned out a lot of the times when they mentioned uh, crab and coconut, I would start thinking about red lobster and just lose it for a couple of pages. Um, we don't, we don't get a lot of that here where I live now. So that was, uh, that was distracting in the, in several, several occasions. Um, I, I have a question yeah, for I you, don't. fellas. Hmm? Okay, go ahead. Would you eat another person if your survival depended on it? Um, uh, I'll say this. Uh, you don't really... Get to you don't really get to pick what you do when you're starving. Like if you're starving, you'll probably eat anything. So I'd like to think that I wouldn't, but you know, um, people who are, um, you know, starved or you know, starved for whatever reason, will eat just about anything. But I would, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I don't think I could actually, um, go cannibal. Okay, well, <laughs> my turn. Um, I I always I, I've thought about this several times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I've always said that I would have to draw the line at uh, not so much eating but killing to eat. I, I, you know, if someone drops over from some foul, nasty. <laughs> nasty disease no i'm not i'm not treating it like a buffet at shoney's though it you know would be comparable well, um, well that's what i'm saying though you don't really get to uh like to me right now the idea of eating a squirrel is repulsive right i don't want to eat a squirrel it's disgusting no. to me but if i were starving no. i'm having some squirrel soup you know what i'm saying well, yeah, I mean... I've actually yeah, heard squirrel's when, very tasty. I've had squirrel before, and it's not tasty. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> it's a it's a tree rat. I don't, it's, it even looks like a rodent. No thanks. But, but I mean, but yeah. you're talking about survival. You're talking about, uh, you know, if you're in the... What was the film? Alive, where they crash on the mountain, and basically all the bodies are 
flash frozen of the people that died in the crash. And uh, I think it was, you know, a soccer team or something from, yeah, I don't remember. I saw it in the 80s. But Details. Yeah, I could, I could, yeah, it's the devil's in them. I could, I could see using that as, as a means of sustenance until you can be rescued or find help. I don't think I would have a problem with that. But again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't off somebody because I was hungry, uh, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm unmoved, man. I don't think I could eat uh, anybody under any circumstances, but uh, if I were starving to death, I could probably eat just about anything, just like the just about any person i think they're capable of some pretty horrible things when they're um when you when you get down to those when those primary uh needs are not met i.e food sleep shelter anywho love i i I would eat that's that's a secondary need but yeah i would eat the shit out of some people (laughs) not not literally (laughs) i would i would not literally eat the shit out of people well, you don't. But know yeah, that, I'm, you know. I'm. Like after after kind of reading this book and and kind of thinking about it, I, I kind of understand. Like, there's a something in the news several years ago about a, I want to say it was a German person went to jail for eating a, uh, like a volunteer, like someone volunteered to be eaten. Oh my god. Oh, I remembered. I remembered about that. Yeah. Uh, did he? He didn't actually eat the guy, did he? Oh, I don't know, but I get it. <laughs> well, that that actually makes me think. I don't understand why they had to hunt in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, I, I could think they had fruit aplenty. Uh, they, they they mentioned taking crabs up to the fire to cook them. Right. So they, they didn't necessarily need the pig. They didn't need the pig. I, I mean, I guess what he's getting at is there's this um, the the hunter's instinct. Um, will uh prevail but not so much the hunter's instinct i think they were just bored as shit like can you imagine being on an island uh day in day out yeah they did say it was fun Mm. so yeah yeah and uh, and then again you've got to think these are these are pre-adolescent boys and you know what's more macho than because i think they even make a bit out of it at first where he couldn't stab the pig he was afraid of it and then later he gets into right yeah so i mean these guys are just like look how macho i am i can kill this we can kill this pig together and we're hunters now and yeah so i i, I think that. i think uh jack probably saw that as a path to chief uh chiefhood so he's like if right. i just hone these hunting skills i can take over yeah, castle absolutely. rock yeah, absolutely. Castle Rock Entertainment. There you go. Um, well, good. Uh, so, so what's what's the consensus on that? Dylan and I would eat people. Ansel would not. I would not. No, it's like I think there are uh, fates worse than death, and I think eating another human being would be uh, in that category. I am morbidly curious about what people taste like. <laughs> Like I think that's the definition of morbidly curious. You laugh, Elijah, but I'm in the same room as this guy. <laughs> Not quite as funny to me. <laughs> no, I, you know, there's um, what is it, Long Pig? They said that sometimes uh, yeah, well, when sailors were at sea for so long that the cabin boy would die, and they would uh, cook him up and eat him, and uh, and call it Long Pig. And I think in the Hitchens book it talks about how. Basically, people in pork taste almost identical. Um, uh, I'm not sure where Hitchens got that, but uh, got got yeah, gotta I, go I low, and we, <laughs> low and slow. Low and slow. Yeah, well, low heat over a long time. Right, right. <laughs> that's, that's the secret to little kid soup. Yeah. Um, no, I just, yeah, I don't know. I was, it's when you put in this situation where you have to eat or die. Uh, and yeah, and it's me and one other guy. Then I guess he's on the menu. So yeah, I guess if like you know how like if you don't want somebody else to eat your stuff or drink your stuff, you like lick it. <laughs> what if you like just you know you're about to die, you just lick yourself and like <laughs> you can't eat me now. <laughs> yeah, that would help. Oh, I was totally gonna eat you, but now I'm grossed out. So yeah, that's no, like, thank uh, you. 
<laughs> so uh, there's a. So yeah. Okay. What? Here's a hypothetical. What if we, the three of us, were on this this abandoned island, abandoned on this island, okay. marooned, as it were? Okay. What uh? What would what would you guys do? <clears throat> Ansel, you go I would first. Just stay put. Well, there's this, um, you know, uh, there's that is the first rule of of survival is just to stay put. I would I would probably stay on the beach. Uh, I would I would actually probably you know there are all these down trees that aren't getting enough light. I would probably collect those and spell out help in as many languages as I as I knew, which. How, how, many moment, langu- how many languages? At is the that? moment, it's just one, <laughs> but I could do it in Morse code. Does that count? I would t- put like yeah. three coconuts, but well, lay down three trees lengthwise, <laughs> three more coconuts, <laughs> um, and uh, I would put those all around the island. So, like, uh, obviously, I mean, the the plane crashed. If, okay, therefore, hold, on, oh, hold, hold on, let me, let me no, let no, me, hold up right there. Me, I've got a very important question. All right, go ahead. If you were a flying a plane over a remote island and you saw a word spelled out on the beach but it was in a language you didn't understand what would you do then like oh that well you couldn't land like or you wouldn't have to do anything if you were flying over it's a there's sea no pl- airstrip it's a, it's on the plane like all right of course sea plane will you stop and say hello it's like hey what do you guys need you need some <laughs> you need some uh spears or you know uh, uh, i'd probably just be like oh man that I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand what that says. But my my the, my the rationale here is that all right, th- an airplane crashed at this island, so obviously this is a, uh, some airline follows this route over this island. You know they never really talked about that, but it's got to be right. They weren't just this wasn't the only time a plane had ever flown I, over I this island. The, I got the impersonation that they were being evacuated from the impending nuclear war. Because, like, it, it's very briefly mentioned, but there were nukes dropped. I must have kind of snoozed what, as I read that. I don't remember that. Yeah, because when he talks about his dad dad being at the airport and finding them later, he says, no, they're all dead. Remember the atom bomb. And uh, so, yeah, there was some bombing going on, and these kids were being evacuated somewhere. And they never see another and, and plane fly over the entire time they're there, except for the one that gets that's shot right. down. Yeah. Yeah. So and, apparently, and there's a military. Again, I don't think there were any actually. Cr- I don't think there were any Go actually ahead. crashed planes on the island. Um, I believe they they parachuted in, is what I, I understood. I don't know. I, I, I was. I thought was that there. Asleep, I thought that there was a plane remember. wreck there because they they keep referring to a part of the jungle as the scar, and I thought that was referring to where the plane went through. Uh, as it no, crashed. that's but just maybe the, not, maybe. like the the side of a mountain. That's yeah. just uh, yeah. Okay. Like an escarpment, right. I guess, mm-hmm. is where that term comes from. Like a drop off off the off a of some land. I don't know. Okay. Okay, yeah. I was thinking it was a canyon or maybe where they cut through where the plane went through, but yeah, I don't think it ever implicitly said that there was a plane there, come to think of it. Hmm. It's uh it's it's right. funny what I've what it's funny what I've added to the book. I I guess I need to answer Dylan's question as well. Um what I would do if it was the three of us on this island, uh I think Ralph had it right. You you keep the fire going with the with the green leaves and the lots of smoke. But I mean, they they have crabs and coconut, and yeah, I, I, it seems throughout the entire book, I thought, what a what a chilling, suspenseful tale set in the middle of paradise. Man, I would love to be in that place for a couple of weeks. So, I mean, they especially have fresh uh, especially with this new knowledge that back home was like a nuclear wasteland. I don't remember that, but if that's if yeah, that's the case, then yeah, why would you why would you want to? I mean, yeah, easy for me to say in this air-conditioned uh, uh, real paradise <laughs> of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. But um, yeah, I don't. I I think you know. I, I think um, they they could have been worse off, in my opinion. Here, here's what I would be doing. I, I have this philosophy that I try to live life by, and it's a don't sweat the small stuff, and b. <laughs> It's all small stuff. 
I would be wasting away again in Margaritaville looking for my lost shaker of salt. You wouldn't you wouldn't have no margaritas though. Uh I think that's sure, a I'm pretty a, sure you can ferment seawater. Yeah, a coconut mm. milk. Yeah, you can you can ferment coconut milk. It'd be fine. Yeah. You, you can ferment anything if you put your mind to it. Yeah, you just say anything about lime trees or salt trees or um tequila trees. Mar- Margaritaville is is more of a state of mind than it is <laughs> Uh, a drink choice. <laughs> All right, you heard it here. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> All right, so let's do uh, let's do part two now. I think we've covered a lot of the book, but I I, I really don't want to do part two. I think the conversation's going just swimmingly. What was part? Uh, I don't remember the parts. What were the the parts? <laughs> the part one was going to be talk about the book. Part two was going to be what will we do for a movie, things like that. Um, well, before but, we move on from the book, I, I, I kind of want to I want to play a little something here. And um, okay, this was um, this is some audio of the author talking about the book, and he's kind of talking about um, why why he chose for the book to be about little boys and not, you know, girls or boys and girls. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) That's a new intro. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just happy to be here. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so here, here, here's William Golding talking about his book. When girls say to me, and very reasonably, why isn't it a bunch of girls, and why did you write this about a bunch of boys? Well, my reply is, um, I was once a little boy. I have been a brother. I have been a father. Uh, I am going to be a grandfather. I have never been a sister or a mother or a grandmother. So this is why I wrote it really about little boys. That's one answer. Another answer is, of course, to say that if you, as it were, scale down human beings, scale down society, if you land with a group of little boys, they are more like scaled-down society than a group of little girls would be. Don't ask me why, and this is a terrible thing to say because I'm going to be chased from hell to breakfast by all the um, women who talk about equality. This is nothing to do with equality at all. I mean, I think women are foolish to pretend they are equal to men. They're far superior and always have been. But one thing you cannot do with them is take a bunch of them and boil them down, so to speak, into a set of little girls who would then become a kind of image of civilization, of society. That's another reason why they were little boys. The other thing is, why aren't they little boys and little girls? Well, if they've been little boys and little girls, we being who we are, sex would have raised its lovely head. And I didn't want this book to be about sex. I mean, sex is too trivial a thing to get in with a story like this, which was about the problem of evil and the problem of how people are to live together in society, not just as lovers or man and wife. All right, so what's Charles' thoughts on that? Uh, Go ahead, Ansel. Uh, I haven't formulated it into a sentence yet. Why don't you go ahead and then (laughs) I'll get back to you. Well, okay. First off, he talks about uh, uh, being a a a father and a grandfather. And then in almost the same breath says that sex is such a trivial thing. I'm wondering how long it took to become a father or a grandfather. (laughs) 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 No, I, I... yeah, first off, uh he that nice save on his part, you know, the 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 saying that women are are far superior to men and always have been and always will be. That was one way to pull his foot out of the grave. Um 
but it makes a lot of sense in some ways. Uh, and then again, you hear a writer's writing from experience. He's he's a, he's been a boy, as he said, so he knows the way a group of little boys would generally. Uh, I would say depreciate in that island how how things would spiral into chaos and uh, yeah I just think it makes for a much more interesting story than um, than the the opposite of that which would be you know order and politeness and <laughs> not, far less killing but uh, yeah so not, I can't boil it down to a sentence either but I I, I get what he's saying there and uh, it makes sense to me Ansel. Yeah, I think he. I think he should have stuck with his first. Uh, the the reason number one. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, number two, he, he just you know, I felt embarrassed for him, uh, hearing him hearing him dig himself deeper and deeper, and um, just sort of uh, grasping at straws too. Uh, so yeah, I can I can, I buy reason one, reason two. Uh, pretty. Can can, can you pretty, clarify reason one and reason two? Can I do what? Can you clarify there? Uh, clarify reason one was like because he understands boyhood having been through it. Okay. Uh, reason two is that, well, girls don't really represent humanity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I was making sure you didn't mean <laughs> reason one being girls don't represent humanity and reason two being sex. Well. No, yeah, no, no. Reason one was his his first, the the reason he gives. He should have stopped there. Yeah. Audio book or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll I'll say, let me let me read a little bit of what I got before we move on to your next thing. I um, you know, my my thing is I go into these books blind without any context. Um. Hmm. So I didn't read the introduction or the epilogue to this, um, but I, I did bring the introduction with me. And uh, interestingly, uh, it was written by our uh, our good friend Stephen King, uh, friend of the show. And I uh, just wanted to read an excerpt or two. Well, he says he says that he uh, he grew up in a small New England town, as we know. We, you know, he's told us that so many times. Um, and they didn't have a library, but the the bookmobile came to their school. And um, he said that. Let me see if I can find it. He asked the um, proprietor of the bookmobile, "Do you have any stories about how kids really are?" And she thought about it then went to the section of the bookmobile marked adult fiction and pulled out a slim hardcover volume. Try this, Stevie, she said. And if anyone asks, tell them you found it yourself. Otherwise, I might get into trouble. The book, of course, was the one you are now about to reread or perhaps, oh, lucky you, to experience for the first time. Um, So that that was uh, Stephen King's... um, introduction to this and uh he goes on to say that it was a uh, sort of a um uh, one, one of his initial inspirations for doing his type of uh his type of writing which i would classify as suspense and i think this is kind of a, a seminal work of suspense uh in my opinion the lord of the flies is uh, yeah that's very interesting i appreciate both of you bringing that to the table uh really interesting stuff interesting questions and i w- the word suspense came up that's this was such a page turner for me to be honest like i just couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next and uh yeah i think uh our friend stephen king hit it right on the right on the head there um dylan did you weigh in at all on um what uh Tolkien uh Golding himself said about why he didn't use little girls I I didn't I don't think you No I didn't, I didn't weigh in at uh, all. Uh, and then I'd like to hear your opinion on uh what Ansel just just gave us. Well yeah um I think I think it might have been a, a much less interesting story possibly with little girls um just because little girls are much less interesting and they don't really represent 
you know what it means to be human. No, in all seriousness, are we are we trying to get like Breitbart Breitbart <laughs> sponsorship for this podcast? I don't understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> it's that, that, this should work actually. No, go, no I, go I, on. I I do think that um, he he was kind of on the money. If it had been boys and girls, like it would have just been about about sex. You leave a bunch of. Which, I mean, even then, even with it just being, this kind of just occurred to me, just boys, like, you know they were, you got the, that pre, pre-pubescent, pre you know they were they were chopping some wood, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get that energy out but somehow. He, but he doesn't mention that. He doesn't mention that on purpose. It's, it's, Im- not it's fair implied. For you to well, I, I think it's probably, it wasn't his goal to... to discuss the thing but it could have been like a cool opportunity to, to like define a new hierarchy uh sort of like you, you remember that movie half baked where they're in prison and like the squirrel master was the the <laughs> <laughs> the leader they could have done something like that um but yeah the point was not to talk about how you know how social hierarchies form it's just about how um people are Evil at heart, I think, is what he was getting at. Does, is, didn't he say that in in the right, introduction? Yeah. yeah, that's that's the overarching theme of the book is the the evilness of men. And as far as the suspense goes, uh, let me say this: like, I think this is probably why it didn't really grab me uh, because, as I think, like, it didn't have its intended effect on me. Like, I'm surprised a little bit, Elijah, that you say um, that you say it was a page turner. Because to me, like, yeah, this was an early work of suspense that was important, but like suspense, if, if any uh, genre uh, sort of <laughs> sort of builds on it, or like does has like one upsmanship, they like how how much farther can we take this? I, I would say that right. suspense would be that genre. So <laughs> <laughs> this would be the what the. <laughs> 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 the, the genre. <laughs> anyway, um, but since it was such an early, uh, early example of it, and since we've seen much, uh, much more suspenseful, you know, we've read books that are more suspenseful. We've seen shows that are more suspenseful. You know, in this this age, it's like post. Um, uh, what what's the post nine eleven? No, no. Uh, the post post Game of Thrones era that we live in post game of thrones or post uh heath ledger joker like this doesn't really <laughs> cut it for me you know what i mean it's just not really that you know the the beast that they see on the rock that um or that they think they see i'm you know it's just sort of like eh, so what it's a little bit like um so you're saying you, you've been desensitized to suspense well i think it i mean it, it's like all right it's gonna um out me as a, a nerd, but I've never been able to play the first Final Fantasy game all the way through to the end because it's like you get halfway through it and you're like, "What's the point?" Because like any literally any other game in this genre will be better than Final Fantasy. Um, but you know, I you I, I think reading it like I'm glad I read it because I think it's as a you know as an academic uh, exercise or academic undertaking. I think it's important to read it. And you know, I'm not, I never regret, you know, adding a a notch in the hilt of my mind dagger. But um, <laughs> as far as like entertainment goes, it was pretty pretty lame, in my opinion. Yeah. The, okay. the, to kind of add on to that, you brought up the the first Final Fantasy, and, and I think that that that's a pretty pretty good pretty good analogy. Like something old, but also kind of defined uh defined a genre. You got a genre. You got a. Is it, is it in the back of the throat? Genre. You got a. You got to roll your R's. Oh, I can't. I can't roll my R's. No, not roll. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like there's still there's still older, older RPGs that that hold up a lot better than than the first Final Fantasy. Like, um, here, here. 
I mean, the first the first Dragon Warrior, I played that one, or I, Dragon Quest, I played that not that, that long ago, and it held up surprisingly yeah, well. Yeah, that held up good, because I think that, that that's like a... Um, uh, the nostalgia factor there is off the charts. Like, I think it holds up good for us, but if you read modern reviews, people are like, yeah, it kind of sucks. And I think Stephen King probably, you know, a friend of the show feels the same way about Lord of the Flies. It was like his dragon quest that he loves and is important to him and is an important work. But, um, in the year 2017 for, three dudes in their 30s probably isn't going to have its intended effect okay all right well let me let me uh make an attempt to answer to this um (laughs) regardless of the genre (laughs) wait wait what was that word (laughs) i i can't roll my g's i'm sorry regardless of (laughs) whatever the book (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Regardless of the type of book that it is, um, you okay? I, I have to start with saying that some of the things that he's described in this, I all jokes aside, I found very uh, Tolkien esque in the descriptions of the landscapes and then the way night falls. And uh, I remember as a boy being in the woods as night would fall, and that's some of the most terrifying stuff. Ever. And I don't know if I don't know if you guys can can, you know, think back to Boy Scouts, maybe or, or hunting with the uncles in Tuscaloosa. And and yeah, I do remember what night the, looks like. when you're alone in the woods. <laughs> yeah. OK. <laughs> well, you know, it's 2017. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but that and and coupled with, you know, I've uh, you know, I, I did the military thing for a little while and. And there were times where it was uh, fifty young men, which we weren't prepubescent. There, there was, there was. I'm sure there was more wood chopping going on in, in out in the out in the field somewhere. But uh, just for instance, um, I remember being out in the woods in the middle of Germany and um, being surrounded by wild boars in the middle of the night, and it was just myself and a, another guy on listening and observation. And we had no actual weapons. We were using blanks. And uh, we, we figured out really quickly that you could put the cleaning rods in the barrel and use the blanks to propel them as projectiles. And and it was due to the fear of these feral hogs that uh, we were in thigh-high grass and you couldn't see them. And uh, as far as suspense goes, I was just able to put myself back in that place or put myself as a child falling asleep and wondering if those shadows I was seeing on the tree were um, actually what they appeared to be. And so for me, every every page was, uh, you know, I know there's nothing there. I know there's nothing there, but what is it, you know? And uh, I think that's what made it a real page turner for me is I, I was really able to put myself in this in this area. And another interesting thing is, and, and even even we three have gotten off on this track, uh, earlier talking about cannibalism, there is no cannibalism in this book. And I've just always heard that the book had to do with uh, young adult or young fine young teenage cannibals. and prepubescent males. Yeah, these nice. fine. <laughs> nice. Well, they, there is no mention of cannibalism in this book. Nowhere in the book do they eat another human being. Which There's, I was severely not disappointed I don't with. Care like that's that's what got me to the end. <laughs> and so far so is when the naval officer appeared at the very end. I was like, is this a mirage that Ralph is seeing right before he gets eaten? And they described the succulent, succulent taste of, of this man meat. But no, <laughs> there was there was no there was no man meat to be had. I think we just locked up that Breitbart uh, <laughs> Breitbart sponsorship. <laughs> I mean, I mean, but isn't that interesting? I've always heard that you know, oh, it's these kids and they're on an island alone without adults, and it devolves into chaos no, to the point that they're eating each other. Seriously, though, I did, and, I did have the the same impression, and I was really like that. That was the driving force. Like that was what I was waiting for. That's what the suspense was building to. Like I wanted to see what the fuss was about with the the cannibalism, 
and it never oh, happened. It yeah. was a and it was a it was a blue balls situation for me. Yeah, yeah. Bait maybe maybe there's exactly a sequel exactly. where exactly. the hunters stay behind. They're like, no, <laughs> we don't want to go back with this guy. And um, <laughs> and then maybe they engage in cannibalism. I don't know. But Lord of the Flies two long piggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's really good, Dylan. All right. Um <laughs> All right, I'm center channel. So I'm going to I'm going to keep this rolling. We've got some time left. Uh Simon, the character Simon in the book. All right. I think the kid was either tripping on the flowers that he found in his little hidey hole or he was having epileptic fits and epileptic seizures. And I, yeah, I think I it was kind of kind of implied that he had noted. he had some sort of uh, epilepsy, or, or he would have he would have these feigning spells, which in nineteen fifty four or whatever it could could mean pretty much anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think um, I I th- I thought it was more just like probably um, exhaustion, and I I didn't think I didn't read it as him being epileptic. I just thought that he kind of lost his grip there um it could could be um i'm not sure where the post-it is right now in the note and uh, or in the book but uh at some point it says he he knew he was gonna have one of his uh oh what does it say for crying out spells uh he knew he was gonna have one of his spells or one of his something or other but then it talks about this hole that he ends up finding this little place that he hides in where the uh, the flowers would open up uh, in the evening, I believe, and you know that that could have been a a trigger, or you know, I just I just found that to be very interesting the way it was spaced out through the book, and and then you get to this uh, this culminating point where basically he's talking to the the pig's head on a stick. Um, he was one of the more interesting characters to me at that point. <laughs> you know, like what there's Simon or is, uh, the Lord of the Flies, yeah, Simon. Yeah, uh, Simon, uh, which is, you know, uh, talking about Simon is the only time that the Lord of the Flies is mentioned, which is this, you know, pig head on a stick. Yeah, well, it's, Thoughts it's, there, or? well, the Lord of the Flies that is just the specter of death. It's not a pig's head on a stick necessarily. It can be, it can take that form. Interesting. No, I didn't, I didn't think of that. I just. It just seemed like the guy was tripping on flower juice or uh, or having epileptic fits and started calling the pig the Lord of the Flies. But yeah, um, I, get, I mean, there's it's surrounded in metaphor and deeper meaning that I'm just not gonna. I I found it as a suspenseful adventure book that I really enjoyed, and yeah, uh, I think uh, Golding, uh, J.R.R. Golding himself says at the end of it that uh, that the book is about mankind and and devolving into these situations where uh you can't you can't rely on um on government or systems or politics or or anything of that nature that everything boils down to the morality of the individual and yada yada it was a, it was a good story and and that's what I got out of it that everything that I read in it seemed believable and uh interesting well written I think quite patient Yeah I th- I think um you know my my qualms about it or just from the fact that it wasn't interesting to me but i think you know as well written i don't think he was like a clumsy or or um incompetent writer i you know i thought he it was just fine uh but i think the book is in in the modern day i think it's better for like writers maybe people who want to write suspense as a sort of a um a role model but to me um, glad I read it, but it was just a, an early example of suspense that, uh, if, if we weren't book clubbing about it, I probably would have quit about halfway through. To, to be completely fair, like this should have been a novella or a short story, something along those lines. Like there was a whole lot of filler in between sh- like stranded kids and, uh, yeah. savage, and yeah, I agree with Dylan, but uh, Elijah was saying he liked the uh, descriptions of the landscape and stuff, like uh, kind of like Tolkien. That's actually my least favorite part of Tolkien when he just describes um, what they see in e- each direction and like what how the landscape rolls. 
Um, but that's just, you know, my, my, you know, that, that I understand why Elijah doesn't look at that at filler because he likes, uh, that type of writing, that descriptive writing, the, which I could do the with world, that. the world building of the, yeah. the island. Well, yeah. And, we, and, and I, to be completely honest, I, I have to disagree with both of you as far as it being a lot of filler, uh, I think I think a lot of that descriptive writing and a lot of building up that landscape uh, helps to build the tension and the insanity that was uh, going to be the the culmination of it all. But you know, maybe I'm just grasping at straws to defend something, and I'm no, I'm, I'm, I don't I'm think so. I think uh, that's just the kind of writing you like. And there's week. nothing wrong with that, Elijah. You can like that kind of well, writing and still be a good person. You know, see, I, I, I see yeah, it as a difference. Don't patronize between, me. Uh, <laughs> I see there's a difference between Generation X and myself as a millennial. <laughs> I, I have a much shorter attention span as a as a millennial. I, I, I identify as a millennial, and <laughs> you can't that that brings what that like, what brings are we even me, talking that about brings right me now? to this. This bring this brings me to this. Last week we were joking about angry small people, and that's what we were going to read this week. And uh, we mentioned that a bunch of teenagers ate people, which never happened. And Dylan said that they were grounded. There was no Nintendo for a couple of weeks, right? Remember? Remember? I if do not, remember pull it up that, on yeah. your podcasting. I, I, your I don't recall. Of pods like equipment. I said, I have a very, very short attendance span. But you said it, though, I think. <laughs> yeah. You, as, as you, but you did say that. And, you do, and I found it completely interesting that these kids stranded on the island kept saying, oh, if we can only build a TV. And this was set in, like, 1955. Like, what the hell were they so eager to watch? Uh, leave it to Beaver? I mean... Uh, no, that was... He was just being sarcastic. He's like, well, we need to uh, we need to get rescued. He's like, yeah, we'll just build a raft or a TV or a, uh, uh, an airplane. Right. Uh, they but were, I mean, I you think know, TV uh, is sarcasm. mentioned three or four times. Yeah, but three or four times in the book. Oh, we should... Oh, I wish we could build a TV. Well, that yeah, was... Okay, at the time, sarcasm, that was a pinnacle but, of impossible things to build. It'd be like now saying, oh, let's build a... Xbox One and get off the island, you know? Or Dylan's a millennial. What would you say it was? It would be the modern oh, day sorry. equivalent? Uh, that would be uh, a fidget spinner? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Why don't we fidget spin our way off this island? <laughs> I hate those damn things. Uh, is that a problem in your school, Ansel? Um. Oh, you're out of school. Never mind. School's done for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all over. It's not not so much. I mean, right. I never. It, it didn't annoy me as much as uh, some other people. But yeah, uh, everybody yeah. had one. It was uh, pogs. Like, were they or were they really that? Like, I have no interaction with the the little ones. <laughs> um, the little ones <laughs> love their fidget spinners. It's true. But I think it'll only last for like four more months because it's boring. Uh, and there's nothing else it can do. It seems like like fads like that come and go much quicker than than they did in our day. Like I mean, Pogs were a good solid year, two years. Hmm. Well, cell phones. Yeah. I mean, those well, are like you said. That's a, uh, that's a fad that's kind of sticking ten- sticking around. <laughs> <laughs> cell phone. Well, yeah, like it's it's it's. That's that's ironic. It's it's the cell phones are sticking around, yet they're to blame for the millennials in their in their thirty in their second commercial attention agenda. spans. You know? Yeah, I, mean, it just made me think. <laughs> you have the ultimate fidget spinner. You have like a computer that fits in your pocket, dude. Million dollar idea fidget spinner app. Yeah. There you go. We're done. We're done. Book oh. club is over. <laughs> Cut that <laughs> out. Yeah, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're, we're not gonna broadcast club. that. We're not going to podcast that or broadcast it. Spin class. That's not happening. That's our idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's well let's put the spin on this and and uh, give it our ratings. Uh, I guess it's time for ratings, and then we will move on to uh, talking about next week. Or I'm basically going to throw the floor to Dylan, and Dylan, you're going to tell us your choice for your book or. Uh, some final closing thoughts on uh, our little series of angry, uh, angry young people, and uh, I guess I will start with my rating. Uh, I'm gonna give uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's *The Lord of the Flies* five soaring American eagles. It was just—I uh, know it was written by a British man, 
Um, I, wait, wait, I wait, 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 what uh, if American anything Eagles? it had to do with the Hobbit? Yeah, yeah, American Eagles. Yeah, but I just, I just feel like uh, he really all, captured think, the the spirit of Eagles the American, American Boy Scouts. They, they are right. Well, um, there's Russian Eagles, but they're ugly. <laughs> do, do you do mean they bald look, Eagles? Correct. Yeah, yeah, right. Of course. I mean, yeah, Eagles, dude. Come on. Not those like buzzard looking things in Russia. No. Like a full on hard soaring death to them all, let God sort them out, American Eagles. I think Gold uh Gold Golding? Yeah, Golding um has fully captured what it means to to be an American, you know, the to hell with the fire that <laughs> the we need savagery? to rescue ourselves. Like... Yeah, oh, yeah. On to your high horse the... over there in Europe. Oh, these savages right, no, over here yeah, in, the, no, in the colonies. No, no, no. I... <laughs> I... he's captured it. He's done it. You know, the hell with the fire to rescue ourselves. We're gonna, we're gonna kill some pigs. And uh, yeah, and, and I did honestly, all jokes aside, find this to be a hell of a page turner. And uh, full honesty, full disclosure, I started way late on it, and I read basically the whole book yesterday and today and uh yeah i just finished it like two in the morning i I was it was an anti-page turner for me i had a hard time Mm. turning those pages all right ansel uh let's ansel go ahead with your rating then and then let's throw it to dylan and uh well i I kind of uh hinted at my rating i'm gonna give it one wooden roller coaster because it's it is a it's fun it's a good time but it's uh you know it's kind of like you know, it's, it's kind of like your grandpa's roller coaster. Uh, we have much better steel roller coasters today. So, uh, Lord of the Flies, Will, William Golding, I award it one wooden roller coaster. And out of how many wooden roller? Well, like, what's the maximum <laughs> wooden roller coaster you can have? Well, wooden roller coasters are measured by speed, not number. So it's one, one forty mile per hour <laughs> wooden roller coaster. What's the max speed? That's what I'm trying to get. 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but that's that's uh, false equivalence because it's not like, uh, you know, it's not linear to stars. like the Because you're going to have fun on a roller coaster regardless of the speed. But if you, if you stay at a one-star hotel, it's not going to be as nice. You know, you're not going to have fun. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I dig that. I, I give it three conch cells out of five. Um <laughs> I don't. I don't have any in depth reasoning behind that, other than they talk about conch, conch shells in the book, and they only have one, and they thought that was pretty, pretty jazzy. I'm giving it three. <laughs> it, I do. I do think it was. I, I enjoyed it more than um, Catcher in the Rye, simply because here, here. it was. It there was a sense of adventure, there was some action involved. And it wasn't just a a moany teenager. I like the catcher in the right better. Boo. So, all right. Well, awesome. Um, <laughs> final word on that is boo. No. <laughs> all right. Um. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's it. Except for to turn it over to Dylan and and you know, like gracefully step away from the podium. I'm done. I picked a good book. Uh, we, in fairness, we all did pick Catcher in the Rye, so I think we're one for two. Uh, we're batting 500, and, uh, Dylan, what's up on the, uh, agenda for next week? For next week, I am picking the novel Survivor by Chuck Palahniuk, who is made famous by his, his novel turned film Fight Club, starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton, um, Survivor is probably my my second favorite novel by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, I did want to pick something more contemporary, something more exciting. I think we're we're getting our our nose up in the air a little bit with all this high literature. Um, want to bring it down to something <laughs> something dope, something fresh. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 all what right. we're reading for next week. Uh, hopefully, you can find it cool. in. In Germany, Austria, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> if not, then 
We, can we, we have Amazon, Amazon here too. Oh. Yeah, that's true. You can get an ebook. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a v- really interesting novel. I've read it before. I'm going to read it again. I really enjoy it. It's as far as suspense goes. I think it's going to knock it out of the park. And yeah, it's it's one of my favorite books. All right, cool. Anything to add, Ansel? Uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, as always, you know, I always look forward to book clubbing with you guys. Uh, it's been an honor. Uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, thank you for the fellowship. Uh, thank you for book clubbing with me on this beautiful Sunday. And as no always, make sure so, uh, to, to follow us. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Social medias, uh, www.bookclubcast.com. Um, That's a mouthful. Bookclubcast.com, yeah. And we're also on Reddit at r slash bookclubcast, I believe. Yep. Also can get Is that, that correct, Dylan? B- b- bookclubcast.reddit.com. We'll also get you there. All right. And as always, just holler into the uh, tubes of what is known as the Great Wide World Interwebs, and you'll be able to find us here, there, and everywhere. Uh, you can share your thoughts. You can read along next next week's book with us, and uh, we'll try to get a discussion going in the subreddit. Next week is Dylan's week with Chuck Polanyx. 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 It's just Polinick. Yeah, it's just got extra letters. Okay. Chuck Polinick's Survivor. I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm not read it. That's going to be cool. But you have wasted another perfectly good hour listening to us club a book. And we couldn't thank you enough. Uh, So from Center Channel, this is Elijah Crowder saying thanks again. And we'll see you guys next week. Ansel? Sayonara. Adios. And that's it for us. Bring us out of here with the music. Good night, everybody.